All right, guys, today I wanted to do a video talking about an interesting topic that I see a lot of varied responses from different knife tubers and other creators as a whole. And that is something that, in my opinion, a uh, kind of learning lesson, and I always enjoy sharing these. And this is why I never sell or trade my knives anymore. Now, to follow this up, let's start with a little bit of a backstory. When I first got into knives, I had, you know, a growing collection and I thought that it would be cool to trade off, sell off some knives that I wasn't using as much or that I thought I didn't like. Now, none of these knives have been sold or traded by me and none of them are for sale or for trade, but ultimately, what this ended up leading to and coming up, I guess I should say, in the knife community, I saw that there were, once again, quite a few knife tubers, content creators, and just knife people in general that had a large or vast collection that was essentially a revolving door when it came to knives. They would, you know, get new knives in, trade them off, sell them off, buy new knives, and, you know, um, go about the their knife collecting in that way and certainly and this is no knock against those people that did and still do that to this day you know it is cheaper and probably more affordable to you know trade off older older knives that you have for new knives to you know make content on and just overall experience and while that is a very true point the reason why i no longer sell and or trade off knives that i collect unless there's a really really pressing uh, desire to do that is because I found myself repetitively selling off knives that I actually ended up really liking and would subsequently go back and buy a similar knife. And for example, here are a couple that I did actually sell off and buy similar knives. Not the same, of course, but I did end up buying essentially the same models again. So the first one for me, or one of the most notable ones I should say, is the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza or Large Sabenza 21. I originally had an Insingo grind, kind of plain Jane, just titanium scaled uh, Sabenza 21, Large Sabenza 21, and I had ended up selling it because I thought that was a good idea. And and it was one of those knives that I think like one of the tricky parts was, and like I said, this is why I kind of made this hard and fast rule of just don't sell or trade off knives is because I, I looked at it and it's like, you know, I don't carry it as much as I used to. Maybe I don't like it quite as much as I used to. So, you know, what the heck might as well sell it off, you know, use it to fund some other purchases on other knives. Well, that was a you know that was a thought in the moment but then there kind of comes down to that point where you look and you're like man you know I really miss having that knife in the collection and you go to reach for it you go to EDC it and you know you don't have it anymore and so that was what happened with me in the Sabenza or large Sabenza 21 and why I ended up actually getting the micarta inlay tanto version of this blade is because I knew that if I was going to get another one I wanted one that was a little bit nicer nicer than my previous version and that is how I ended up with this guy. Now another one that is a little bit more affordable but another one that fell into the same circumstances was the mini grip or the Benchmade 556 and this is one that I originally had a black handled version of this basically same steel same basic knife but with a black um, FRN or um, whatever the they use for these handles and so I ended up selling that one and I sold it for a hundred bucks and I was actually able to get this one shortly thereafter for 60 bucks so in a way I I still do regret selling that knife and of course that regret led me to buying another one it just so happened I did kind of come out on top with that whole transaction because I ended up selling my original one for more than I paid for this one but the moral of the story was ultimately that you know I was like oh you know the mini griptilian by Benchmade you know it's a nice knife but just wasn't carrying it as much and so I ended up selling it now that was a mistake because I do actually really love this knife and it doesn't see as much pocket time anymore because I have some options that I like carrying just a little bit more but I love having this guy because I will occasionally EDC it and moreover I love this thing for survival kits 
for outdoor stuff and this is such a capable knife for those types of tasks not to mention the original access locks like this guy here are incredibly tough you this thing you can literally baton through wood and it will act like a fixed blade so it's really strong really tough but this isn't a video about the 5d6 just a, a video that saying I regretted it selling it. So with knives like those, and there are multiple other knives that fell into the same kind of exception for me, I decided that after after losing those knives and having to essentially just buy them back, I was not going to sell off or trade off any more knives. Now, the kind of asterisk to this is, yes, I do still sell and very, very rarely trade off knives, but I only do so after having had the knife for quite a long time and genuinely knowing that either A, it's not a knife that I really enjoy using or really like using, and could I live without it? And those are some of the exceptions that as I've grown in my kind of knife collecting, I, I know my tastes uh, more or at least I understand, you know, what I like to have and don't like to have in my collection. So I know that like there are certain knives that I could afford to get rid of and, you know, if I wanted to get rid of them. But by and large, I try to not really get rid of any because one, a lot of these knives are useful for certain types of videos pointing out, you know, specific types of EDC tasks. And once again, a lot of these knives do see very frequent EDC. Once again, it's kind of nice to have, you know, 30 plus knives that you can pick and choose whatever you want for whatever tasks that you need to do. So definitely there is a level of collecting to it, but at the same time too, there is also a lot of purpose behind it. And I think when I was initially, you know, like selling off knives, I didn't fully realize that. And, you know, it was like, actually, you know, things like the Sabenza are really handy for certain tasks and for certain times. And while the Sabenza 21 isn't perfect for every single thing, it's pretty darn good at a lot of things. So it's, you know, one of those blades that I definitely keep around. And also there is a lot of sentimental purpose or value to them. And sometimes I think that like, it's easy to get lost and just, uh, you know, be like, oh, you know, that blade would get me, you know, 400, 500 bucks real easy. So just sell it off. And it's like, actually be kind of nice to have it back in a collection. So anyways, that is a, basic breakdown of why I don't really sell or trade off knives anymore. Um, like I said, I will every so very often, but by and large, unless I really, really know that there's a knife that like I just don't use or just don't like, a lot of it comes down to if I just plain out don't like a knife, then I'll probably sell it. But for the most part, like my collection is knives. Like I really only buy the things that I know that I really want or have really been after. And so therefore there's not a lot of incentive for me to get rid of them. You know, something like this Protec SNG is a knife that I tried to get for like a year, like dedicated searching and trying to find one and buy it before anyone else did. And so it took me a lot of time to get there. And so it's something that I'm not really interested in selling because I was, it's something that I was after for so long and really did want. So anyways, guys, that's kind of my breakdown on why I really don't sell or trade knives. Hopefully you guys found it enjoyable. I thought this perspective was a little bit different than most knife tubers because I see so many of them, like I said, essentially have a revolving door of knives, which is cool in its own right, I suppose. But I definitely, if I was in that case, there would be a lot of knives I'd look back at and be like, man, you know, I really love that knife. And then I just end up going out and buying it again. So for me, I'm like, I just try to keep it because I know that I would buy another one. <laughs> Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.